Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming today. Hope you all have recovered from the lunch coma, so maybe, maybe a little awake in the, after your first nap here. Um, we're here to talk about uh, building a big data practice on AWS. So maybe some of you already have a big data practice. Maybe some of you are thinking about building uh, a big data practice or just want to learn more. Um, I have with me here uh, Eric Hekula from Business Development and Amazon Web Services, and we have a special guest, Brian Barker, uh, CEO of uh, Partner North Bay, APN Partner North Bay, who's going to talk about some real life uh, situations and some case studies. So what you can expect today, what we're going to talk about is first, uh, Eric is going to come up and he's going to set the context for really what is big data. It's a, it's a term that you hear a lot and uh, we'll talk about what big data is and what big data on AWS is all about, uh, including some of the tools that we use. Um, Brian, as I said, is going to come up and talk about some case studies, and he's going to give you some real life examples of how these tools are used um, and implemented in practice. Um, and then I'm going to wrap things up, and we'll talk about some best practices for APN partners, specifically regarding big data, um, and some of the APN resources that are available to you as partners. So with that, I'm going to kick it off to Eric. Excellent. Thank you, Chuck. Great, so we always like to start by setting the context for people in terms of what we mean when we're talking about big data, uh, mostly because it's kind of one of those really you know, overly hyped terms in the industry today, um, you know, cloud, big data, uh, those types of things kind of lose meaning when they're, when they're used constantly. So uh, what do we mean by big data when we talk about it and, and why do we care? You know, and particularly as you know, uh, you know, partners working with customers to integrate these solutions, why do we care? And so what we're finding is that the convergence of technologies such as cloud, mobile, uh, social media, et cetera, uh, is just creating a massive explosion in the amount of data that's coming at companies and organizations. And so this unconstrained growth uh, is just running away. Uh, you know, we've all see seen analyst slides that look very much like this with the hockey stick, stick curve up, you know, taking us from the, the world where, you know, a company and organization only had to deal with maybe terabytes worth of data, uh, but now we're moving into a world where we have to start thinking about petabytes um, and, and, and data volumes even beyond that. Uh, so some of, the, uh, you know, some of the use cases that we look at with customers is, is the ability to take um, all of that, that massive uh, richness of data that's coming at organizations. So there's a lot coming, uh, but you have to do a lot to massage the data to get it into a usable manner. Uh, but the, the, the value and the plus side for organizations is that it can drive a lot of value uh, and answer lots of business questions for organizations and companies today. Um, so giving you the ability to do things such as customer segmentation, uh, marketing spend optimization, financial modeling and forecasting, uh, ad targeting and real-time bidding, uh, clickstream analysis and even fraud detection. So just lots of things that are able to make uh, organizations and companies much more uh, informed of what their customers are doing and why, and able to then, you know, more importantly, take action uh, from that intelligence. And so what you're seeing is that uh, the ability to, to generate data, uh, collect and store the data, and analyze it, uh, really that when we, when we get at the crux of you know, what is big data, why is it different than you know, the data analytics that we've been doing with computers for the past 40 or 50 years? Uh, and really the, you know, the simple answer is that uh, because the data volumes are coming, so, they're becoming so large, they're coming so rapidly, uh, and from many different sources, uh, is breaking the old tools and the old ways of doing things. So we can't just capture the data and stick it into this one tool, the relational database that we've used over and over and over for the past 20 years. Uh, we're having to think about new ways of, of collecting and storing and then analyzing and applying the analytics. And so what you're seeing is that uh, the, the data is being generated at a much lower cost and an in increased velocity. So the, set, the data sets are, are again growing and coming much faster. Uh, but the, the collection and storage and analyzation tools haven't quite kept up with that same speed. Um, so oftentimes the, the collection, storage, and the analytics piece actually becomes a choke point and, and becomes constrained as the data comes faster. And so this is creating a, a, a data gap so that the amount of data that organizations and companies are generating uh, is sloping up much faster than their ability to actually deal with the data and actually derive that useful intelligence that we want to derive from it. So we need to think, rethink the way we're doing things and the tools that we're using and how we're applying them to start to close this gap. And so really that's what we've done with the uh, AWS Big Data Solutions portfolio that I'll talk about here in a minute. Really what we've done is taken uh, many of the, the kind of general value propositions of the cloud and the things that the cloud is very good at, so the ability to provide elastic and scalable computing power and storage, uh, the ability to provide a better 
uh, business model and operating model where you don't have to pay for a lot of capex on, on kind of heavy, big storage, big box solutions up front. Uh, the ability to pay as you go and, and making these resources available on demand. So you're able to, you know, one of the key things I think with data analytics is that uh, you don't know what you don't know, so there needs to be a lot of experimentation. You need to try lots of different experiments. You don't know which ones are going to be successful and are going to actually yield intelligence. Uh, and there will be many that will be unsuccessful. So you need the ability to spin up lots of resources very quickly to try all of your experiments, find the ones that are going to fail, fail them very quickly, spin them down, and then move on to the ones that will be successful. Um, and this you know, helps us to eliminate that, that kind of bottleneck in the constraint. And so what you find is that you're able to get your insights faster, you're able to make your data science team and your data anal analysts much more productive because they're no longer now wasting time uh, on mundane tasks for them, which is figuring out simply how to deal with the data volumes coming at them, how do they store it, how do they collect it, how do they apply the analytics. Uh, you want, you know, the uh, data scientists certainly don't grow on trees and their time's extremely valuable, so you want them to be able to move to the data science and, and generating those insights as quickly um, and with the least amount of resistance as possible. And so that's really what, what we've tried to do. Uh, so Brian's going to talk about some, some great use cases um, kind of after I'm, I'm done, so that'll be really informative, but you can certainly learn more uh, online from what of our, our customers have always done. You know, obviously one of the, the best ways to learn in this space is, is with, with any other, is to always look at what customers actually have done, how are the tools being applied. So there's some great ones on our website uh, from customers such as Life Technologies, LinkedIn, uh, Dropcam, and Nokia, who have who've implemented some really interesting uh, big data architectures on AWS. So this is essentially our core uh, big data solutions portfolio, and so these are the solutions that, that you'll see used over and over in those customer use cases. So essentially as you look at that kind of three-step process for, for working with data in terms of collecting that, that data that's being generated in an ever faster and, and uh, uh, more voluminous way to collect that data, you then want to be able to store it reliably and durably in solutions like S3 uh, in DynamoDB, uh, maybe Glacier for archival once the data becomes aged. Uh, and then you want an ability to have a tool set to apply the rich analytics and to derive that intelligence that you're trying to get at. And that's where solutions like Elastic MapReduce, uh, running open source frameworks on EC2, uh, perhaps Amazon Redshift for data warehousing, and our new Amazon machine learning platform come into, come into play. So as you look at Amazon S3, uh, Amazon, Amazon S3 is one of the very subtly powerful big data tools that we provide because essentially it's object-based storage uh, at a very low cost and essentially um, it, you know, almost infinitely expandable. It gives you a, a, a great place to be a single uh, landing zone for all of your data. So essentially you can kind of build that single source of the truth data lake uh, in S3 and then you have a very rich collection of tools that sit around it for the actual analytics. So things like Elastic MapReduce for Hadoop, Redshift for data warehousing, etc. Uh, and it's also highly durable because you don't want to lose the data. So essentially store anything and everything and don't worry about the durability of the data in S3. Uh, then we also provide Amazon Kinesis which is a powerful uh, ingestion tool for particularly when dealing with real-time data feeds. Um, so one of the, the things that's actually compounding the big data challenge is that not only are we trying to deal with uh, greater volumes of data coming at us faster and from different, uh, different sources, but now we actually also want to do our analytics much faster. So instead of taking hours to days to get to answers, we now want to know something within seconds to minutes. So we want to start to do stream processing instead of traditional batch analytics. And so Amazon Kinesis is our ability to enable that stream processing to happen because you need a, a powerful ingestion tool that can allow you to uh, ingest the data at a high throughput that's easy to use and then syncs to the other uh, tools within AWS. So you can use Kinesis to stream your data very quickly into S3. Uh, you can use it to get your data into the data warehouse in Redshift very quickly or into DynamoDB for NoSQL. And the great thing about Amazon Kinesis is that it's fully managed, it's very easy to use. So as you look at the high level architecture, you know, one of the very powerful things that we do with Kinesis as an ingestion tool uh, is that we do replicate across three availability zones before you hit your next landing place. So that means that uh, your data is highly durable and highly re reliable uh, via the three-way replication uh, across AWS availability zones. And then you can essentially run the Kinesis stream into any of the AWS uh, big data tools via connectors. So you can basically, again, stream your data into S3 or, or Redshift. Uh, you could run it into Elastic MapReduce and run something like Spark Streaming to do real-time analytics uh, via the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, so Amazon EMR, uh, or Elastic MapReduce, 
is essentially our managed Hadoop offering. So essentially it provides you with the power to uh, have Hadoop as a service. Clusters can come and go. Uh, we enable the service to, to work with the very rich Hadoop ecosystem. So things like uh, Hadoop tools like Hive, Impala, Spark, Presto, et cetera, all work with EMR. So you can spin up an EMR. Uh, you can submit Hive queries against your data. Uh, you can run, you know, uh, in-memory Elastic MapReduce with, uh, or in-memory MapReduce with Spark. Uh, all of that rich richness is there. And one of the really powerful things that we've done is that you, we give you two options for the, the storage substrate for EMR. So essentially you can run HDFS locally on the EC2 instances, uh, or you can actually stream your data in and out of S3. So uh, EMR is an example of where we're uh, kind of taking that S3 data lake and we're allowing the tools to actually run against S3 so you don't have to worry about moving data uh, between the tools and between the environments that you have inside of AWS. Uh, Amazon DynamoDB, um, highly scalable, fully managed, uh, NoSQL data store. Uh, so it provides you with uh, seamless scalability, uh, zero administration. Uh, oftentimes, you know, managing NoSQL data stores such as HBase can provide a huge operational burden uh, and requires multiple admin administrators. Um, so the, the, the aim of DynamoDB is to really eliminate a lot of that heavy lifting that, that customers often have to do to run their, uh, their NoSQL data store. Uh, and it's also highly performant, so we are able to provide single digit <coughs> millisecond lat latency via uh, Amazon DynamoDB. Uh, Amazon Redshift is a relational uh, data warehouse, so we get great performance because it's massively parallel uh, columnar based and it's built to be petabyte scale. Uh, again, it's fully managed. Uh, we give you options such as H, uh, HDD and uh, SSD backed platforms. Uh, and the, the cost point on, on uh, Amazon Redshift is, is hugely attractive. So if you look at a lot of hardware based uh, data warehouse solutions out there, um, they're often 10 times the, the, the price that you can get from Redshift via reserved instances, which starts at $1,000 per terabyte per year. Uh, and more importantly, Redshift provides you these, uh, you know, the, the ability to finally take a data warehouse and allow it to scale at the same speed um, as of the business. So what we found is that in the past, customers would run out of uh, space on their data warehouse appliance. Uh, it may take anywhere from six weeks to six months to uh, increase that capa capacity. And then once they get there, they're actually already out of capacity again, and they're constantly kind of on this treadmill running to, to keep up. And so the, the power with Redshift is that you can provision that extra capacity in a matter of hours, uh, maybe even minutes, and, and make sure that you're never turning away business units or data scientists who want to get their data onto the data warehouse. You can truly um, meet the needs of, of uh, every group and organization within the company. Uh, the other great thing about Redshift is that it provides uh, all the security solutions that come with Amazon uh, Web Services. So you're able to use uh, SSL to secure your data in transit. Uh, many of our customers use encryption to secure the data at rest. Uh, no direct access to the compute nodes. You're able to do, uh, you know, leverage tools like AWS uh, CloudTrail and AWS Key Management System. Uh, we also provide Amazon VPC support. Uh, inside of Redshift, and it's, it's met many of the compliance standards and regulatory frameworks. So uh, Redshift uh, has received SOC 1, 2, and 3 compliance. Uh, it's PCI DSS Level 1, FedRAMP, HIPAA certified, et cetera. Uh, Amazon Machine Learning is one of the, uh, the new services that we announced earlier this year. And so essentially what we do is we allow you to have access to easy to use uh, managed machine learning algorithms. Uh, you know, really that, that are built with the developer in mind. So the goal of Amazon Machine Learning is uh, what we found internally at Amazon.com, which we think is a common uh, situation kind of across the industry, is that we have a lot more software developers around than we have data scientists. And so what we want to do is uh, give, give the power of the, uh, give power to the, the software developers to be able to do uh, basic and common machine learning things so that we're not having to waste time of those very valuable, very limited resource of, of data scientists trying to do those things. So really, a Amazon Machine Learning is really focused at uh, putting uh, the power of, of basic machine learning into the hands of, of developers. So uh, you're able to, to run robust and powerful mach machine learning technology, which again is based on um, the systems that we've developed over the years at, at, at Amazon.com and, and with Amazon, within internally at Amazon. Uh, so you can create models using your data that's already stored in the AWS cloud. So you can essentially run uh, Amazon Machine Learning against S3, RDS, and Redshift. Uh, and it allows you know, software developers to deploy models to production uh, within a matter of seconds. So you know, really what we're focused on, on providing is a complete platform for your big data and analytics needs. 
Um, so the ability to do analysis and reporting with things like uh, Redshift for Data Warehouse and Elastic MapReduce for Hadoop. Um, the ability to do here and now real-time stream processing, so things like uh, Amazon Kinesis and running real-time open source frameworks on EC2. Uh, and now the ability to also do things like predictions via the Amazon machine learning platform. Uh, and again, EMR can be a great solution for that as well. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over now to Brian Barker from North Bay Solutions, and he's going to talk to us about some very interesting customer use cases and, and how people are actually doing some of these things that, that we've begun to talk about. Thanks, Eric. I really uh, enjoy that. Thanks, everybody, for coming. So one of the things that we looked at and what we were asked to cover was big data use cases. Second thing we were asked to cover is partnering uh, with AWS and some of the things that have worked about us, who have worked. And the third thing we were asked to cover is who and what are North Bay. And we're going to focus on that more on what trends we've seen be successful uh, when we started companies. We've had the good fortune to start a few that have been successful. And one of the things that we learned in that is that if you inspire and you have a mission and a purpose that transcends technology. So we didn't start off with big data and analytics. We didn't start off with cloud-based big data and analytics. But the model that we used was the Apollo lunar landing. And the reason we used that was everybody who worked on that said that was the peak work experience of their life. It's where they did their best work, and it's where they inspired others uh, to do their best work. And so that's what we aspire to. If we get really smart people and can imbue them with that mission, it doesn't really matter what the technologies are. We're moving forward. And so that's one thing that we've seen uh, successful in some companies. Um, it's resonated with customers. We started four years ago. Uh, we've got over 150 customers. Uh, you probably know some of them. So a few other, uh, just a few other uh, demographics about North Bay is we grew to over 200 people in four years. We did that organically, and why we thought that was, it's not the only way to grow, but the reason we thought that was important is by definition, if you can grow to 200 people organically and profitably, it says that the services you're offering are what customers want to buy. It says the way you're delivering them is why they're going to stick with you. And finally, it says you're pricing them right because you're able to profitably grow. So that's just one of the things that we've seen. Uh, what we focus on, we do two things really well. Uh, we focus on cloud-based big data and analytics solutions, uh, most often with Amazon technologies. And we also focus on mobile. I'm just going to breeze through some of these. Normally, we would talk about more of some of the use, use cases. But these are some of the enterprise customers that we've delivered solutions for. And then we've had, got some startups that we're really proud of uh, that became big. And so one of them was Karma Science. And uh, who here has a birthday? The gentleman right there has a birthday. So the reason we're proud of Karma Science is, you know, we've all had the experience on Facebook when somebody has a birthday. What's your name? Chris. So if we wanted to wish Chris a happy birthday and clicked on that little gift to send him a gift, well, you're utilizing software that was written by North Bay. And so that was kind of cool on the mobile side. Uh, and Karma was acquired by Facebook, and those guys now presently run uh, Facebook's gifting. So that's really cool. But more importantly, we built for about a year for Facebook after doing that. And what we saw was just the avalanche of data that comes through mobile applications. Everybody's using their mobile device to access. So we think that the combination of mobile and big data is you know, one key for uh, our company's success and maybe key for other companies. Um, TapJoy is a, another one that we're proud of. And TapJoy just had its billionth download uh, a couple months ago. And we were the first 15 engineers who worked, coincidentally, with the same guys who did Karma Science uh, that helped to build that product for them. So anyway, these are just the things that we're seeing is the intersection of mobile and big data offers an awful lot of uh, opportunity. So we're also asked to, uh, see, uh, to state what we're seeing as the trends that are driving big data adoption. So every one of us has been really excited when we go to a website, an app, we show up at a company, a store, where they anticipate what we want and they deliver us something of value. And to do that, it's a keen understanding of the DNA of those customers. Who are they? Why are they buying from you? Why are they using your service? Why do they leave your service? Why uh, are they going to competitors? Why do you never find them to begin with? So these are the kind of questions that we're finding is if you can answer those as a company, then you just have a tremendous ability to profit. And so we focus on doing that. Um, other trends that we have is good demographic information. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in our next use case. Uh, that we'll get to in one second. But the biggest thing 
that we find uh, when we're doing this is we think we're really good technologists, but if we focus on the technology, then we don't deliver the value that we want to. So we're excellent technologists that focus on delivering business solutions. So the first one we're going to talk about is a leading media company. And these guys are into music videos. And they had two high-level goals. One is they wanted to be able to drive more revenue and drive more profit. Second one that they wanted to do is predict important events, as we talked about. The problem is we couldn't really build to that, right? That's a very high-level goal. And oftentimes we hear customers. I had uh, somebody call me up the other day and said, you know, we want to build Uber for a different market. How much would it cost? <laughs> you know, that's a hard question to answer, right? Um, so, you know, we get that a lot. And you can't really build to that. You have to uh, break the process down into smaller, uh, into smaller uh, pieces. Um, so this particular company uh, sold both directly. If they sold directly, they kept 100% of the revenue. And they also sold through partners where they kept a much smaller percentage of the revenue. So they were in need of better decision information and they wanted to sell more directly was one thing. So to, to kind of break this big problem into smaller pieces, uh, what we had done was worked with them and we had sat with the senior people in the company. So senior managers, finance people, sales people, marketing people, analytics people, product development people. And we were able to come up with 35 plus use cases and we asked them to dream big. You know, nothing's out of the question. Dream big. Just tell us what it is that you're going to need. And we heard really interesting things. So, for instance, the salespeople said, in Europe, we have no demographic information. We're, uh, we have 18 countries that we sell to. But we're really handicapped because we really can't. We're selling ads, but we can't tell people who's viewing the ads or are their budgets being fulfilled. Another thing they said is, if Hershey's, for, this is a for example. This is not a real life example. But if Hershey's wanted to reach 25 million women, between the ages of 25 and 35 to sell candy in the two weeks before Easter, that's a really good time to sell candy and it's a really good people to sell candy to, but they did not have the key value pairs that would allow them to sell that directly. Uh, so these are some of the things that we gleaned. Engineering said, hey, we want to know where people are using our product and experiencing success. Uh, where are they dropping out? Analytics people said, yeah, sales, you might be able to sell that directly if we get that information, but should we? Are we going to make more money? if you sell those uh, Hershey's ad directly. And the, the short answer to that one is it depends how those videos skew. You know, if you're picking uh, Celine Dion, maybe you only have to show 40, uh, maybe you only have to show, you know, 40 million views in order to fulfill the quota of uh, married women between the ages 25 and 55 in the two weeks before Easter. But if you're showing Led Zeppelin, you, you're probably going to have to show 150 or 200 million. So it's, it's the analytics, should we do this? Net of this is we got these 35 use cases, and that was really good. But the next trick was in, in what we're seeing is the next trick when you're delivering these solutions is to take that down to the next level. So here we associated three things, right? We had the business use case. We had the goal. We had the aspiration that the company did. Then we put two things to it. What are the KPIs that would deliver that goal to you? And then let's take a look at the data sources, right? And what that allowed us to do is to take all those 35 use cases and pick the right one in order to implement something quickly. So we've gone through the first two phases of, uh, you know, of what we are doing. It's dream the big dream, and then it's distill that dream down into discrete pieces, discrete business ideas. So some of the decision points we had to use to pick that first slice, and their goal and our goal was to deliver something in 13 weeks that would impact the business, that would be revenue impactful, and it had to fit into 13 weeks. So we selected those key value pairs uh, that I had mentioned around uh, the Hershey's fictitious uh, customer. And you can see we used a bunch of uh, Amazon technologies to do this. We used S3, EMR, Redshift, Tableau. Uh, we were able to come up with that first cube in 12 weeks. And I mean, how much more impactful can you be? You're impacting a company's ability to sell and, and have direct sales. So in that case, we were able to pick the right use case. So what were the, some of the project challenges and learnings here? Well, man, there was a lot of competing interests. And so it, uh, you know, if the customer each member of the customer, if you ask them to dream the big dream among the many departments, and if each one of those has their own competing interests, your company should evolve the political skills to gracefully walk them into one. One of the things that were really impactful for us is we were able to say, will it fit into 13 weeks? And that helped just to rule a lot of them out. So we weren't challenging you know, uh, which, which competing interest got uh, time. It's just which one would fit into it. Uh, other use cases. Uh, that we looked at had dirtier data than anticipated. And so that was something that we were able to rule that. Uh, another use case with this, it's, uh, you know, provided we selected the right use case, having that other topographical roadmap that went through the other 34 that we didn't implement 
was really impactful because it gave the customer a roadmap and us a roadmap to follow. The next thing that we followed there was the engineering team uh, wanted to have real-time information. 100 million video views is a real big thing for the artist. It's for the record company and for, this, for our customer. So they wanted to know within a minute or two when, if Taylor Swift came out with 1989, you know, when that was going to hit. And why did they want to do that? Well, they're able to say, okay, Taylor Swift's at 92 million right now. We can reach out to people who have identified themselves as Taylor Swift fans and say, we can get her over the top by 4 o'clock this afternoon. And man, how many videos does that, you know, how much revenue does that drive? How many videos does that drive uh, for people to see ads on? Um, as we take a look, we used the same, uh, again, a, a primary uh, Amazon stack uh, in doing this. Uh, Tableau, I think, was the only tool that we used that was not Amazon in that particular one, and we added in Kinesis. The other reason we did this is it was, Kinesis was just announced at the New York Summit, and we were doing this as that was happening, so it really gave us expertise, and that's another key that we found, is if we can do things with new technologies early, it gives us a leg up. Finally, this is the roadmap that I had talked about. And when we had uh, deployed, or when we would deploy the other 34 use cases, this is the way it looked. So it gave the company, the, our customer, comfort that said, OK, these guys knew what they were doing. They were able to successfully navigate us and deliver something. And now we know how to go forward. So some of the uh, things that we had delivered in this, and some of the things were you know, key value pairs that impacted uh, direct sales, uh, more responsiveness to artists. Salespeople had information that never before existed. So these things are not technical, right? These are business uh, goals. And uh, again, we found that that has been a successful model. Uh, last thing is uh, we some new products that will probably amaze you know, everybody, and it's their ideas that we happen to be the implementers for uh, coming out. It's, it's going to be really cool uh, on that, and they could have never existed without big data. I'm going to breeze through some of these, uh, but uh, just to, that was kind of an exploded view of we started with a customer knowing very little. We got them to dream big. We implemented a slice. We delivered something, and we showed them the roadmap. We've done very similar with uh, companies like Katara, another ad tech company. The challenge there was, you know, was, was the opportunity ripe for them to uh, invest more money and drive more ads? Could they have virtual alchemy? Could they invest 35 cents and get somebody to their websites that would spend $1.50? Or was it reverse alchemy? They would spend a dollar, and uh, they would only get somebody spending 50. So we've done real-time bidding systems. This wasn't, but it was a really interesting uh, Redshift use case, and we really enjoyed working with Rahul Patek and his team uh, doing this. Remax, uh, everybody knows the name. Really complex organization, right? Because at the top layer, you have uh, a company and a brand. But as you go below that, you have not all that many people there, but you have master franchises, you have areas that own people, you have uh, sub-franchises, you have sales reps. And it's really complex as far as just tracking what's going on and what things are impactful and what gives them an edge up versus Century 21 or their competitors. Um, we've done mobile apps, as we had talked about. Uh, I'm going to breeze through Karma Science because we talked about it earlier. But again, just the avalanche of data that we saw there, it just the light went off, and that was when we kind of made the jump into big data. We just said, look, this combination of mobile and big data is something that's powerful. Um, we hear a lot about Internet of Things, and this customer uh, building robotics took it to the next level. They turned each one of us into a thing. So uh, their, their goal was to reduce heating costs for people who manage large buildings, and their goal was to uh, make all of us comfortable. And so they had an app called Comfy. And if you're, in a, if you're in an area like this, right, it's big, it's sometimes used or not, the heating system may not know, you know, whether we're in this room or not in this room. So they'll gradually either cool it down or heat it up until some of us say we're too cold or too hot. So again, just a very interesting app. And again, mobile and Internet of Things coming in, except for in this case, they used people and uh, in their apps as sensors. Uh, I'll skip that one. So the last thing we were asked to talk about is partnering with AS, a AWS and some of the things that have been helpful for us. Uh, first of all, training and certification. Uh, we have found that uh, you know, it's a benefit to our employees uh, is one thing. And second of all, we found it gives customers comfort for us. Uh, it allows us to, uh, it, it really allows us, we've had you know, more than 45 team members certified, and that's something that's been very useful for us. Um, it allows to us to have core competence. Uh, we've also taken advantage of the training coupon that they've given us. Um, North Bay uh, is the next thing is we've achieved competencies uh, that allows our team to develop, iterate, and grow. And early in the presentation, I, meant, I mentioned that you know, the right motivation, attracting the right people, transcends technologies. 
However, you know, we're able to take advantage of the, uh, of the programs that AWS offers us that really evolves our, 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 our people's ability to deliver. And it's a real benefit for them coming on board. Finally, the APN partner directory, Chuck will talk more about that. Um, we've been able to put public case studies up on the AWS website. So we got Remax, MIT Tech Review, Katara, uh, some other there. So these are some of the tools that have been really uh, important to us. And hopefully, you know, ours is not the only way. It's just been something that has worked for us. And hopefully we try to share uh, with you uh, some of those things. Uh, also, uh, in the shameless plug, we're hiring like crazy. And if you happen to know any people who are good, send them us our way. Thanks, Brian. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the APN, the AWS Partner Network. And so uh, Brian has used a variety of, of resources within the APN. And um, the APN exists really to help you grow your business on AWS. Uh, and that's really the only purpose. Um, and so I want to talk about a few best practices for consulting partners. And what I mean by best practices are these are things that consulting partners have done over the years that have proven to be successful and that work very well within uh, the APN. Um, the first thing is uh, package solutions. So as a consulting partner, um, you have capabilities, right? You have a lot of people and they all have talents and you maybe have certain areas that you fit in. You have a big data practice, a mobile practice. Um, we're here to talk about big data. So, a package solution is a way to think about delivering your capabilities in, in a way that grounds it for your customer. And if you think about going in and talking to a CIO or a CTO uh, or a CEO about what you're going to do um, and what you can do for them, uh, it's a lot easier to talk about a health check. It's a lot easier to talk about an assessment. It's a lot easier to talk about a very specific kind of engagement that they can wrap their heads around that solves a problem that they have, uh, getting back to what Brian was talking about, addressing the business need, than it is to really talk about the things you can do. So package solutions that include uh, statement of work, you know, kind of a bill of materials for, for what you're going to do with pricing, architecture diagrams, whatever works for your business, but allows your customer to see in a really clear way what it is you can deliver for them. Uh, those are very effective. Customer references. Um, if there's anything on this slide that I, that I could, uh, emphasize, couldn't emphasize enough, it's customer references. Uh, Amazon, the retail site that you're all familiar with, uh, through Amazon Web Services, is a customer-obsessed organization. That's absolutely true. Uh, it's in our DNA. And we always, always, always start with the customer and work backwards. And we ask the same thing of partners. So throughout the programs uh, that you'll find within the APN, you'll find that we ask for customer references. And the biggest thing that I see working with partners is they just don't ask. And if you want somebody to dance with you, if you want to get a date, you've got to ask. Your chances increase dramatically by asking. Worst thing they can say is no. But ask for customer references. Build your portfolio of customer references with all the good work you do. Uh, your solution architects. As part of the partner network, you'll work with partner solution architects. Uh, Eric in business development works with solution architects, with salespeople all the time. We have lots of solution architects who are involved in sales and are there to help you. Get to know your solution architect. Your solution architect should know what your package solutions are. They should know what your capabilities are. Because your architect can help find work for you. They can help advocate within AWS for you. Um, they can provide other best practices that they've seen. They can help you with new techniques for new technologies, new things that are coming out. Um, it's just a great, great resource to get to know within uh, the APN. Customer workshops. So this is a little bit more of a, a focused subset of package solutions. Um, workshops are a great intro to customers. Customers love them. And the biggest reason is because you're not selling anything to them. And we see this over and over again when partners put together workshops to help educate customers. Customers are learning, and everybody loves to learn. So put together, whether it's a breakfast, whether it's a lunch and learn, whether it's a seminar in a, in a forum like this, put together some kind of a workshop bring in a room full of interested customers and show them something about whatever it is you're doing. And here we're talking about big data. So in a presentation like this, like Eric started off with, like, what is big data? What does this really mean um, when we're talking about all this information that might be left on the cutting room floor? Get them thinking about the information that they might be leaving on the cutting room floor and how these tools might help them drive better business decisions, as Brian showed you in the customer case studies. Um, 
engage with the AWS service teams. And this is something um, that doesn't always happen enough, but the service teams are really there to help with engagements. They're very, very interested in your feedback as partners as to what you're seeing out there. So if you're using Redshift, if you're using Elastic MapReduce, you're using um, anything really, I mean the RDS platforms, um, anything like that, and you're seeing specific needs from customers, a feature that you have a bunch of different customers they'd like to see and you have deals waiting on the table um, in line for that feature, that's information the service team would really want to know. And me personally, and anybody who wants to come talk to me after, uh, after this session, that's, that's part of what I'm here for. I'm happy to give you my card if you want to facilitate some of those conversations. Um, and lastly, uh, on, on the best practices, and Brian touched on this too, is achieving an APN competency. Um, I'll touch on some resources in just a second, um, but an APN competency is a way to recognize partners who are experts in their field. They have particular uh, areas of expertise, and we, and we have a variety of them. Um, just had an announcement this morning, a new DevOps competency, but as you can see, a bunch of these, they're, some of them are technology focused, like Microsoft or Oracle. Uh, some of them are vertically focused, like life sciences or digital media, and still others are, are groups of technologies that we really think about together, like mobile, big data, and storage. If you do the things we've ha I mentioned in the other slides, if you're building solutions, you're getting to know your solution architect, and you're getting customer references, people who can speak to your abilities and your delivery of these solutions, you are almost all the way to delivering a competency. And when you have a competency, the big benefit is that we're putting you on the website, we're featuring your solutions, we're featuring your firm, and we're using our funds to drive those uh, partners out to the market. So we're running marketing campaigns and we're promoting competency partners uh, at events like reInvent and our summits and, and every place else. So some additional resources um, that you have, and this is not comprehensive, but these are some of the highlights. Um, the Test Drive program is a fantastic program. It's a way uh, for you to try out software um, in a, in a, right in an account, right off the AWS website with a few clicks. Um, a lot of people think about this for uh, ISV partners, for technology partners, and that's all really uh, true uh, because technology partners will use the test drive uh, to feature their software, but consulting partners use it all the time as a way to set up proofs of concept or to show how they can integrate uh, certain technology solutions with their customers' data. Public data sets. Uh, this is really cool, and it's not, it, it's, you, you don't really think about it all the time. Um, as, as a resource for consulting partners. Um, but public data sets are giant, giant, giant sets of data, and I mean like zettabytes of data, that are avail available for you to use for free uh, when you're using AWS. And there's some really interesting data sets out there. One of my favorites is a brand new one where uh, we're effectively collecting literally zettabytes of data on a, on a monthly basis from the largest radio satellite in the world, and I think it's a, a linked satellite between uh, Australia and South America and, or excuse me, South Africa. And this was actually something as I was reading about this, that we were doing this, I was telling my, my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter about this, and this was something she could actually wrap her tween head around, that we had all this data from space collecting you know, radio signals from shortly after the Big Bang, and she thought that was really, really cool. And the moral of that story is, is if I can get a 12-year-old excited about big data, you have no excuse for not getting your customers excited about data because it's hard to do. Um, big data case studies, as Eric mentioned earlier, when you're talking to your customers, it's helpful to reference folks who have done this stuff before, and these big data case studies are available uh, to use on the website. They're publicly referenceable case studies that you can download and review with your customer and show how others have used these tools. And finally, uh, last but not least, uh, acceleration funding. Through every phase, of the growth of your business, we have funding available to help you, and those are marketing funds, proof of concept funds, uh, and other types of uh, programmatic, programmatic funding, um, and I can talk to you more about this um, afterwards as well, uh, available to help you grow your business, to talk to your customers, to take some of the burden of doing proofs of concept and, uh, and uh, testing for your customers away. And uh, that's all we have, so thank you very much.